Hello and welcome to this video on related rates problems in calculus. This video will go through uh, two examples, one of a spreading oil spill and the other of a rising balloon. And there'll be another video with two more examples. So for the first problem, we have a spreading oil spill. Now the objective is to calculate the rate of change of some physical quantity of the problem while knowing the rate of change of some other physical quantity. That's pretty much how most related rates problems work. And related rates are based on the idea of implicit differentiation. And I don't, if you remember implicit differentiation, it's when you, know, you assume y is a function of x. So whenever you take the derivative of y, you write dy dx. And whenever you take the derivative of y squared, you write 2y dy dx. Well, the reason you do that is because the x and the y aren't the same variable. The derivative of y with respect to y is just a 1. But with respect to x, this is kind of a placeholder if you don't know what it was. The difference here is going to be that each physical quantity we have is going to vary with time. So in the case of a circle here, here we have a circle. Let's read the problem. Assume that oil spilled from a ruptured tanker spreads in a circular pattern whose radius increases at a constant rate of two feet per second. How fast is the area of the spill increasing when the radius of the spill is 60 feet? So you have the radius. It's helpful to label your picture. There's my radius. And what do I know? I know the radius is 60, and the rate of change of the radius is 2. And I tend to write the sign in. Now we know this rate of change of radius isn't dr relative to dr because this seconds tells us this radius is measured in units of length. A foot is a unit of length. So this is actually 60 feet. Units are actually helpful in these related rates problems. And I tend to put a sign even if it's positive because things that are expanding or increasing have positive rates of change. Quantities that are getting smaller or decreasing have negative rates of change. And that becomes very important in solving the problem. So I just make sure to affirm that I don't miss a negative. I even write the positives in. So let's see what else is going on. So, so what's happening is as time goes by, this radius changes. And as the radius changes, the area changes. The circle with a bigger area bigger radius will have a bigger area. So how we need to know what the governing equation for that geometry is. And you should all know, and if you don't, you'll know after this, that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared, pi r squared. We say it without really thinking, but that's what that means. So both the radius and the area are changing with time. So if we take the derivative of both sides, and I really like using the notation where you have a ratio, we're taking the derivative of a with respect to time, so it's not just a 1, it's dA dt. It's an implicit derivative of area with respect to time. Pi is a number, so we get pi r squared. The derivative of r squared with respect to r is 2r, but we have to multiply that by dr dt because we want the rate of the derivative with respect to time. So that more commonly is written 2 pi R, you put the constants out in front, dr and dt. So I now have what I call my governing equation. So what are they asking me to find? How fast is the area? So they, they want me to find this. Okay. Let's see what other information I have. I have r and I have dr dt. I can plug those into my derivative equation, and I actually get an equation I can solve. I get dA dt equals 2 pi times 60 feet times 2 feet per second. So that's in feet, and that's in feet per second. That will help us get our units if we're not sure what units of area are. And when I multiply this out, I get 2 times 60 is 120 times 2. I get 240 pi feet squared per second. 
So that is the rate of increase of the area. When the radius is 60 feet and the radius is changing at increasing at 2 feet per second. So notice if, if you ask the question for when the radius is 2 feet, the, the area is changing much more slowly. Okay, so um, that's a classic problem with a circular pattern. Okay, let's go on to our next problem. Our next problem needs us to remember a little bit of trigonometry, so students tend to find these a little trickier. Take a moment and read the problem. I will read it also. If you want to stop the video and read it, that's a good idea. All right. A hot air balloon is rising straight up from a level field that is tracked by a range find for 500 feet from the liftoff point. So here's the balloon liftoff point right there, okay? At the moment, the rangefinder's elevation angle is 45 degrees. The angle is increasing at a rate of 0.14 radians per minute. I'm, my, my math head is going degrees and radians. I'm going to have to make a conversion there, but we'll take care of that. How fast is the balloon rising? So the first thing to do is to kind of draw a picture, and this gets better with practice. I know we're not often out in the field tracking a hot air balloon rising ourselves, so it's hard to imagine. So, so the person doing the tracking is over here. The liftoff point is there. That's your 500 feet. That does not change. The, the range finder stays stationary, and the balloon is going straight up. So you could call that x, but it's going to be a constant. Typically, we call vertical stuff y. So th there's y. Here's your balloon. And the balloon is going up. So dy dt is going to be positive. D dx dt is 0. Okay? And we're not going to need to consider that. But then we, so what's happening is as the balloon goes up, this angle here changes, right? So we're told when this angle is 45 degrees. So I have theta is 45 degrees, and since I have a rate of change in radians, and since we're in math class, I'm going to convert that to radians. That's pi over 4 radians. And you don't actually need to write the word radians because radians is unitless, but I'll write it just for clarity. So when the, that's 400 degrees, and I've already written the x is 500 there. I don't even, I'm not even going to use that as a variable. So how do I relate this angle to this height? Well, in right it's a right triangle, so you can use right triangle trigonometry. The tangent of theta is going to be whatever the height is divided by 500. So as the height goes up, the tangent of theta goes up. So now I can take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So it's an implicit derivative. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So I get secant squared theta d theta dt. Now, I'm going to write that as 1 over 500, because y over 500 is the same as 1 over 500 times y, times dy dt. It just is easier to work with when I realize it's a constant in front. So you should remember this algebra pretty easily. Okay. So, and also, the idea of secant squared theta, well, that is the same as secant of theta squared. That will be important to remember. d theta dt equals 1 over 500 dy dt. So now, that's my governing equation of the relationship between angle and height of the balloon. And now, in, in, when I take the, the tangent theta equals y over 500 is my governing equation. The derivative of it gives me a relationship between the rate of change of the angle. So I, I was also told d theta, I didn't write it down up above though, but d theta dt is, it's a positive 0 0.14 radians per minute. And I, and I know theta is pi over 4 radians. So let's see what I can substitute and see what I might be missing. I might not be missing anything. So the secant of pi over 4 squared times 0 0.14 equals 1 over 500 dy dt. 
Well, they asked me to find how fast is the balloon rising, and that's dy dt. So I have everything I need except for this unknown that I'm, sp I'm supposed to find this. And I have everything else so I can solve this equation. You should remember from your trigonometry classes how to find the secant of pi over 4 is an exact value. You could use your calculator in radian mode, but then you'd also still have to remember that secant of pi over 4 is 1 over cosine pi over 4. And then you're going to square that times 0 0.14 equals 1 over 500 dy dt. And I'm going to continue that over here because I'm not sure when I'm going to run out of room. So cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. So you get 1, 1 divided by the square root of 2 over 2 or 2 over the square root of 2 squared. 1 divided by a fraction is just the reciprocal of the fraction times 0 0.14 equals 1 over 500 dy dt. So this becomes 4 over 2, which becomes 2, 2 times 0.14 is 0 0.28. And then when I multiply that by 500, I get dy dt. And let's see if I did that number out. Um, I did not do that number out because I forgot to multiply by the 500. But when you do that out, you will get... Okay, when I do that multiplication, I get the rate of change of the height is 140. And to see the units, I look back at the problem and I see I was in feet and the units of time was minutes. I see radians per minute, so it's feet per minute. And I could also do that by multiplying the units out. It's a little more confusing with the 1 over 500, but you get 140 feet per minute. A speed or velocity is always going to be a unit of length divided by a unit of time. So that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I will do two more problems, and I hope to see you soon.